All right, how's it going everybody? Uh, we're back at the Mustang again today. Um, I, was, I finished cutting through this quarter panel. Right along through here. And then I did the other side. So I cut the outer fender off. And then same thing on this side, just straight, straight through there. Now what's left is I'm going to have to cut through the uh, package tray right through there on both sides. And then I'll probably have to pop the windows out, these two little side ones, and then the back one. And then cut, I'm going to cut it, I'll probably cut it back from the windshield a little bit, straight across. That way if I decide to keep the windshield, then I can form it how I want later on. But I'm not positive how I want to do that yet. But this is all cut cut free back here I just got to cut that side over there and then uh, making short work of it um, but I'm gonna try and get these this glass out I don't I'm gonna try and get it out with a scraper like go up underneath here like in between the in between the gasket but I don't know if I'm gonna end up breaking those or not I hope not but Everybody pretty much says that it's inevitable that they bust. So I really don't want to break it. I'd like to be able to take it out as one piece, but I guess I'll try and use the scraper. And if it ends up breaking, then it breaks, I guess. But that's what we're working on. All right, so we got some more cutting done. And now she's a convertible. So the whole top is off now and I'm just going to trim all this stuff up, make it look pretty, take some of the back off and then figure out what I'm going to do with the front. But we just flipped it over, took the top off, flipped it over, threw it in the bed of the Ranger. So it'll be going to the scrap yard. So we uh doesn't take long with a sawzall it uh it slices right through that like butter but that roof was pretty heavy so i'm sure i'm sure we've probably shed a thousand pounds or so with the doors the roof and all the fenders and stuff so far but progress progress now we just got to cut i think i'm just going to cut I may just pop off these uh, these spot welds and just take this pl outer plate off and leave the little lip right here. That way I have something to put new fenders to or if I want to make fenders or however I want to do it. That might be what I do. Yeah, wasn't too bad really. Not too very, not super hard. I mean, it's loud, even with the sawzall, you know, it makes a lot of noise. But I've only been working at it for maybe, figure the other day plus today, maybe three or four hours, maybe. So, this windshield was already broke. I didn't break it, it was already broke. But that's still pretty solid, so I may leave that and have the windshield replaced. That way I can keep the stock wipers and stuff. But I don't know yet. I'm still up in the air. I think if I keep the stock windshield and the stock wipers, it would help if it did rain. You know, if I got caught in the rain in it. It would help keep the water off the dash and the electronics and stuff. You know, if I come left the roof all the way back to here, it's going to help keep a lot of water off of that. So I may leave it. I don't know. But here we are. And we'll keep going. This thing is pretty fun, guys. I, I mean, 
pretty fun cutting into stuff like that. If you really don't, you know, care about cutting through the metal, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saving any of that. So it goes pretty quick whenever you, you're not worried about gouging some metal or breaking glass or, you know, worried about when you drop 10 bolts, worry about finding them. I don't care, let them fall. So pretty fun. First time I've ever done anything like this, so. I'm enjoying it though. All right, so today we're gonna take all that stuff that we uh, cut off yesterday and I'm gonna make a trip to the scrap yard. I'm kinda anxious to see how much weight that is. So, I think it's kinda funny. In the comments, put down, uh, what uh, crazy things have you ever seen in the back of a Ford Ranger? Have you ever seen a Mustang in the back of a Ford Ranger? Well, that's half of it. Half a Mustang fits in the back of a Ford Ranger. So, comment on anything that, uh, that you see crazy in the back of a Ford Ranger. But... We got all four fenders, the doors, the roof, the trunk, everything in the back of a Ford Ranger. So I think that's kind of funny. Uh, you know, you always see the the little tweets and the memes and stuff on uh, people showing stuff in the back of Ford Rangers. I think it's hilarious because I use mine just the same as they use theirs. It's always got way too much in it. And I think it's funny that those trucks seem to uh, always be the ones that are like that. So we're off to the scrap yard and I'm gonna see how much weight we've taken off already. And uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so next I think we're going to, uh, I think I wanna see what the wheels and tires are gonna look like on this thing. So that way I can figure out how much of this fender, like how much of this I wanna cut out. I know I'm going to have to leave the shock tower. So I'm probably going to have to leave a lot of this structure in order to keep strength in this. So I don't know how much I can cut out of this to really retain all the strength in these. You know what I mean? So... I know I'm gonna cut the back off. So I wanna cut the back off and maybe narrow it. So I wanna kinda of narrow the back in a little bit. So I think what I'm gonna do is, I may go ahead and pull the seats, pull the carpet, and get all that out of the way. Kind of clean up the headliner and stuff to pull all that rest of that out so i know if i'm going to keep the windshield or not there's been a couple i've been looking around on different cars these death carts and stuff i've been looking around with a few of them and i kind of like the ones that don't have the windshield but the bars are still raked back you know about the same degree as the windshield if i do that then i'm going to have to uh Put a piece of plexiglass or something that I can remove. You know, take on or on and off. Plus, I kind of like the idea of taking out most of most of the inner fender part. But there again, in the front, I'm gonna have to leave all of this structure. You know what I'm saying? So. I'm gonna have to leave a lot of this in order to support the shocks and stuff. So I'm just gonna kind of be figuring that out and seeing what all I, how, how much I wanna cut off, how much, I, so how much I have to keep, how much I wanna cut off, and I wanna see what the wheels and tires are gonna look like. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Set you guys over here so I can, uh, so you can see and I can uh, work. I 
I need to come up with a different uh, stand here. I've seen some people use like uh, those clamps, you know, like clamp, clamp a, a tripod on the. I've got these nice, uh, got these nice big uh, jacks, safety jacks. So I may try and figure out how to use these. That way you guys can see a little bit better of what I'm doing. I've been thinking about getting, uh, I have some microphones that plug into my phone. I don't know if they'll plug into my new phone or if I'll have to get a different set, but I thought about using a mic. That way when I'm over there working on stuff and I'm talking, it sounds as good as when I'm as close as I am right now talking. But at least with this, I can kind of pan around you know, I can move a little bit back and forth and try not to make you guys sick in the process. So yeah, so where to start? Well, I think I'm gonna throw the wheels and tires on here. Well, I wanna see what, I wanna see what that looks like. So I'm kind of anxious about that, and then I'll uh, go ahead and pull the seats and start cleaning up all this mess. Uh, take the car up a little bit and then we'll get started with that. I'll put a uh, I think they're two inch two inch wheel spacers on here so I'm gonna tighten those up and now I'm gonna I actually put these on there because the wheels that I have are a different bolt pattern so this is going from Ford bolt pattern to, I believe the wheels I have are five on 108. So we're going from Ford to five on 108. So that's why I have to put these on here. Plus I wanted them to stick out a little bit anyway. So we're gonna tighten these up and then I'll throw, throw some wheels on there and see what it looks like. tires is flat so I'll probably put it on the front maybe so this 
tire is the one that's got that hole in it. So I gotta get a new tire for this one, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the front up here for now. And I'm only putting four lug nuts on here for now because I do have a set of locking lug nuts that'll make up that one locking lug nut goes on each wheel. So that'll be the other four. So I'm not going to mess with putting those on because these aren't, uh, this isn't the final time I'm going to be putting these on. I'm just throwing them on there for now so I can get the visual of what it's going to look like and determine how much this fender well I want to keep and get rid of and what I want the front to look like, how much I'm going to cut off of it. Kind of get like a visual on how the wheels are going to look. There you go. Now I'll set it on the ground. Show you guys what this looks like now from the side view. Kind of give you a little bit more of an idea of what it's going to look like, or kind of look like, I guess. I think it's off the it's off the lift, so. Definitely going to need to be lowered, so we're going to lower it quite a bit. I'm going to lower it to at least there. Like, I'm going to take like three inches off of that. Now there's no weight back here, so it's not pushing down on nothing. Front, it stand to be lowered some too. Yeah, that's gonna look pretty sweet, I think. I like how the tires stick out just enough to be cool and not real obnoxious. Kinda hard to see in the garage because I don't have like a far enough angle away from the car to be able to see the whole side of it. Maybe once I get it all cut up some more, then I'll pull it outside and take a look at it. But yeah, this has a lot of, uh, like there's like no weight back here, so it feels like it's on the lift, but it's not. The shocks and the springs have enough, uh, pressure to hold it all the way up like that now because there's no weight back here you wouldn't think the uh 400 pounds or whatever that came off the back of this would make that big a difference or maybe the maybe the fenders just came down a lot lower and it always set like that but yeah it's definitely gonna have to be lowered two or three inches I want to put it on airbags. I think that'd be cool. But airbags are expensive, so we may uh, try to go the cheap route first. Just cut a few uh, coils out of the springs. Let the springs drop down a little bit. And because uh, right now it kind of looks like a truck. It's kind of jacked up, kind of high. I wouldn't think 450 pounds would make that big a difference. Or maybe, like I said, maybe it was just the way the fenders attached to the car. Maybe it was always that high. But I don't think so. I think even the side here was lower than that. And I know 
It's not on the lift. The lift is loose, so. Oh, so. But I think those wheels look gonna you know, look cool. But yeah, so let's uh now figure out. I may take these seats out. I want to take the seats out, but yet I want to leave the driver's seat in in case I, you know, pull it in out of the garage or whatever. So I really don't know what I want to do next. Um, I want to cut the back of this off. So I got to move the gas tank. So I'm going to take the gas tank loose. I think I'm going to put the gas tank in between the wheel wells right here. And maybe build like a box around it. That way you don't really see it. It's a plastic tank. But like I said, I may put a box around it. But I may move that up there. That way I can cut the back of this off. Because I'm, I really think I want to narrow it up a little bit. Narrow the back end. Yeah, that's cool. I like that a lot. Wheels and tires make a huge difference on anything, even a car that's all cut up. So the front here, I'm definitely gonna keep this front portion all the way to here. But then from here forward, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know if I'm gonna take this off So if I take the front portion off from say here, from this, where this is all welded to this, if I cut this down like say right here, take all this top portion out, if I do that, the problem is I'm gonna lose the radiator support So then I'll have to put in like a tubed, tubed frame here to be able to remount this radiator to that. I think it would look a lot better with that gone though. It's hard because I don't want to start cutting stuff up and, and then not like it. But like a lot of these boxes, I'm going to have to keep all these. So I'm going to have to relocate that. I'm going to have to relocate this. So I don't know if it's going to be worth cutting this out or if I just want to take and... I'll still have to relocate this. But if I plate this off to where this is solid and make this all solid, I don't know if I'm going to like it or not like that. I think it would look a lot cooler if these were gone. If these were these upper parts were gone and that was tubes, it would look a lot cooler, I think. Cuz then I could get rid of all of this. Move it somewhere else. Relocate the battery behind the seat, I think. Yeah, so I don't know. I'm at a dilemma. I'm at a dilemma for sure. This is all part of the process. You start building cars or cutting up cars and doing stuff crazy stuff like this. You're gonna run into these dilemmas of what you want to do, what you want the end product to look like, what to cut off, what to keep. Well, it's going to be the cheapest versus, you know, if you got to buy a bunch of extra parts. 
kind of want to do it on a budget, you know, trying to do this cheap to where if somebody, you know, one of you guys have an old car out there, Crown Vic or, you know, a Mustang like this or, you know, maybe like an old Corvette that's been crashed in the back or something. And uh, you could do the same thing yourself and, you know, have a few hundred dollars in it, maybe 1500 bucks or something and, you know, have a cool car you can drive around and have fun with. But the hard part is figuring out what you want to do and how you want to do it. And sometimes it doesn't go very fast. Sometimes you got to look at it for a couple days and make little cuts and see if that's what you like. And like in a way, I kind of like the back of this. Like in a way, I kind of like the back, I'm gonna take this off, of course, the vertical part, but I kind of like the floor. I don't really mind it. It's not really sticking out too awfully far from the tire, so it doesn't look too terrible. I'm kind of trying to think in my head to where if I was to narrow this up and cut the back off, shorten it this way, and narrow it into about here, and then build bumpers and stuff on the back, what that would look like when it was done to see if I would like that or not. It'd be more tubing back here, which I think would look cool. And I could do like tubing up from this to here and mount braces from the top of this shock tower to the tubes to reinforce that. And then if I did that, then I could probably cut out the wheel well all together but I don't I don't necessarily hate the wheel well I think it would look cool too if you put like maybe hung a different style fender on here like say you got a fender from like an old Mustang and used part of it you know that would kind of be cool or like a 350Z or something like that and then you could, you know, basically keep the fender well or the wheel well and, you know, build up over the top of it and then you'd never see that. So that could kind of be neat too. So but this is where we're at, guys, and I appreciate you guys watching and, you know, sticking it out with me. And I know it's sometimes it's kind of boring probably. I'm sitting here just staring into space looking at, Trying to figure out how I want to do this. Um, I know that's not too entertaining for you guys. But uh, I appreciate you guys watching and subscribing and you know sharing with people that you might think you would enjoy it or think about doing it with some buddies or whatever. Um, I think I may take go ahead and take out the passenger seat because I know I'm not going to need it per se, right now. But, um, we'll keep going. We'll rip out some more stuff. We'll go with a 15, 15 ratchet wrench. Exactly the right socket here. That's it. I may have to get me a different, uh, give me a swivel, a swivel or a different ratchet too. 
kind of a weird angle. I'm going to try and use one of these. Uh, it's like a swivel built into the socket. See if I can't get that in there better. I'm gonna spray the bottom of those. That way, if I do break it loose, I can release some penetrating oil on the bottom of that. They're super rusty. See how the bottom, the bottoms are exposed under the car. So I'm gonna the front ones aren't like that. Only the back ones that thread stick underneath the car, so they're all rusted out. Not rusted out, but it's pretty rusty. So if I can get it to break loose, then maybe that being on there will help. It'll help the process. That's a good thing since that's a seat. bolts because I may use I may use these same bolts to hold in whatever other seats I decide to put in there. So I can use the same bolts in the same mounting position. So I'm gonna keep these. I'll give the battery one a shot first. This is uh, the earthquake, 20 volt earthquake from Harbor Freight. We'll give it a shot first, see if it's got, see if it can get. Here is the air earthquake three eighths gun in Harbor Freight. No problem. No problem at all. She's a bad boy right there. She is a bad boy. Yeah, 
stop where you get to. And that one did anyway. We won't, we won't talk about the other one yet until we break it loose because you know as soon as you say how easy it's going to come off, that's pretty much jinx it from that point forward that it's not going to come off easy. So don't ever say that kind of stuff and put a hex on yourself. your seat is out. I think I'm going to leave the driver's seat in though. Since I'm going to be driving it like I don't know, pulling in and out of the garage and stuff. Sometimes I move it to my other garage in order to free up the lift if I'm working on other cars or something. And that seat's really not hurting nothing right now. It's not in the way or anything of what I'm doing. So I'll probably just keep it there. This car has an aftermarket radio in it. how it was ran or if it was ran right so I'm going to be taking all this stuff out whenever I go to put the stereo in it myself then I'll redo it all I think what I may do is lower it down a little bit take the take the rest of the headliner out right here what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put these nuts and bolts back on where the seat was. That way I don't lose them since I may use these mounts to mount the other seats. So when you go tearing stuff apart like I am with this car, it's easy to lose bolts and nuts that you may need to reuse or you want to keep. So you just stick them back in the hole, you know, start them two or three threads in, then you won't have to worry about losing them. So I'm going to lower it back down and we're going to pull those out. This gun here is a 3 8 gun. Air gun. This is the Earthquake model. From Harbor Freight. And it is a... It's a pretty powerful uh, air tool. screwdriver, Phillips heads, holding these uh, visors in. I'm going to pull them out so I can get the uh, press the headliner loose and get it out of the way. Same thing with this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this stuff back in there. I may keep, I may want to keep the, uh, I may want to keep the sunglasses, I don't know. Alright, making some progress, slow progress, not real, may not be real meaningful progress, but 
progress nevertheless. I'm going to go ahead and get the grinder out probably. Oh, I've got the salt ball right here. I'll just salt ball them, I guess. I mean, it's like just sitting here waiting, waiting for some, waiting for some action. Salt ball faster in most cases. If you can get the whole, if you can get the big body of the saws all in there, it's usually faster. Do I want to keep these wheel wells? That is I wonder if I want to keep this around for the gas cap. So I'm gonna I'm gonna invert this gas cap to be on the driver's side. So I'm gonna spin it around. So I don't know if I want to keep this cover. Maybe mold this into like a piece of metal or if I just wanna do like an old old school style like a, maybe like a race car style gas hose and not have this cover. It does have a little vent hole here. This center console will come out. Pull the seat belt off this side. Let's see if that center console will come out. That bottom section. Tins where you know where they're going to be, so I'm going to put it in my front pocket because those little you know what's tend to walk away. Pull these lighters out. I don't know if it works or not, but I guess they're, they're just standard lighters, so I can uh, 
and just get new ones. If I decide to put them back in there. I mean, I don't smoke, but lighter uh, plug-ins are good to have since you can have your phone charger and you know your maybe like your GPS and all that kind of stuff hooked up to it. So it's a good source for 12 volts to be able to run, you know, to wherever you need it to. Yeah, I'm, I'm really torn about the windshield. I don't know if I want to keep it or not. If I keep it, I'm going to have to have it replaced, of course, because it's broke, but I'll bring you guys up here and see around. So, those seat bolts I was telling you about, I just put those back in there and that seat belt bolt. And then these ones back here in the back for the seat belts. That way I can tie onto those straps or whatever. And those are real good solid hold down points. But if I'm going to pull all the carpet out and, uh, Yeah, so it's coming along. Another pile of another pile of trash. I think it's gonna be cool. I think the uh, I think the dimensions of this car are gonna look really good when I go to put a cage and stuff on it. Because like the main part of the body, it's kind of real centered in. That's why I may leave the back. Because the main part of the body right here is real centered. But the front and the back is real, you know, symmetrical. From the back tire to there to the front tire to the front is real symmetrical both directions. So it's, I think it would really look good. So that might be why I may keep the whole back. So if I end up keeping the whole back and just cutting this part off and I keep the whole back section, then I can leave the gas tank where it's at. And then I'll just reinforce, you know, I'll put some bars around it. Here's the supervisor. Here she is. Yep. Come out to uh, monitor the progress. She's, uh, she's been out running around. But it's pretty late here, so... What you been getting into, huh? So, I don't know. I'm still debating. Still debating on keeping the back or cutting the back. I don't know yet. I really don't like how the gas fill up is on the passenger side. I think that's always been kind of weird for cars. That, I mean, the driver's the one putting the gas in the car mostly. So, why wouldn't you have the gas fill on the driver's side? So I really, that's kind of weird to me, I guess, but, so I really like to have it on the driver's side, but it's not that big a deal if I decide to keep the back end, then I can just change the hose out maybe, or leave it there, I guess. Then that just saves me a little bit more uh, fabrication work I don't have to do if I leave the gas tank where it's at. But I don't know yet. So, well, like I said before, I pre really appreciate you guys watching and sharing. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That really helps out and, you know, keeps me motivated to do other things and more things. And, you know, if it's helping you guys out any or, you know, you're enjoying it at all, you know, make a comment. You know, if you have any questions about any of my other videos or want to make a comment about keeping the back cutting off the back you know just put it down there in the comment section and i'll read it i read all of them um but i really appreciate you guys and we'll uh keep going and it'll get done eventually and it'll be kind of cool so we'll about once i decide if i'm gonna keep the back or not we'll probably decide on the windshield and then I'll start deciding on the front, and then I'll start figuring out how where I want to put the plates to start building the roll cage. And then we'll be back to bending tubing and 
welding and fabricating the roll cage like we did on the Baja bug. It's starting to get cold here now, so I'm gonna be in the garage working on this and the Baja bug, finishing up the cage and the A-arms on that, building the cage on this at the same time. That's kind of why I tore into this and kind of left that where it's at because I knew I was gonna put a cage in this and finish the cage in that. So if I bring this to the same position that is, I can bend tube, you know, weld tube, make the cages for both of them at the same time. And then I'm kind of, I'm not, I'm not doing one and then having to stop and do something else and then finish the other one. I can just do both cages at the same time. Then the cages are done and then we'll be good to go to finish the rest of it. So appreciate you guys watching and uh, we'll talk to you later.